Hey, Morris. Hello, everybody. My name is Alesh, and thank you for joining me again as we are in Ride 3, counting down for the release of Ride 4 in October. You guys have probably seen some trailers and gameplay by this point. It is fantastic. They're adding animated pit stops. They're weighing the fuel that's in the tank and what's being used. They are going absolutely crazy from tire wear, tire temperature, dynamic weather, all sorts. Ride 4 is going to be incredible. I can't wait, but today I am very excited because, because we are moving on to this. This is the 2008 Kawasaki ZX6R. I had this exact model of bike. You can see it right here. It was the special edition. It was beautiful. And today we get to race it in Ride 3. So far on our Ride 3 career, we have completed this whole category and we have also completed the Kawasaki Ninja ZX-10R Special. This was an incredible two-part series. If you missed it, click up above right here. And if you did see it, make sure you're subscribed and hitting that notification button so you don't miss any of our future videos. Okay, Morris, out. Also, liking the videos shows me great support and obviously helps the YouTube, al YouTube algorithm. So definitely go down there, make sure to like the video. Straight away, they are bringing us into a time trial where we only have to score 137. I did some testing. I'm sure we'll be fine. So let's bring it around in through turn one. Obviously, the difference with these bikes compared to the uh, 300 class or the street twins we were racing in the last series is that these bikes are clearly a lot faster. Not only are they faster, but they have upgraded forks, upgraded rear suspension, things like that to make them really entry level race bikes. This is a different class of bike altogether than what we have raced previously. Now onto a small straightaway, see what kind of speeds we can get up to. 140, 150, this is some incredible speed from the Kawasaki. We have shorter gears than the stock, which is fine. Big wiggle, make sure we make that wiggle work for us. There we go, laying it nicely into that hairpin. Getting some wheelie, gotta slow it down here. Don't wanna have an invalid lap, using the curbs as our uh, marker there. Almost completed with our hot lap here. There we go, very nicely done. Running a 115 so far. Let's see if we can cross in the next 15 seconds or so. I think we are going to be clear. They're not asking much of us, just trying to get us used to what these fantastic bikes are. My best time's clearly a 130. That was from testing. See if we could beat that? Not quite, but that'll be plenty for first place. Let's get into some racing with a few other people on track. Now racing at night is a first on this channel. You can see all the stars up in the sky. We are at Road America. Going into the first corner after a long straightaway. Let's just see how, how this goes. Whoa, big wiggle from the Kawasaki, but we got to make those wiggles work, as we say. There we go. Up to, well, 10th position, not so hot. We'll see what we could do throughout this race. With a long sweeper, we're up to fourth. Come on, bring it on the inside. Get around them. Not too shabby. Beautiful. Okay, ride the curb. Oh, it's gonna run us a little wide on the exit. They're gonna come back at us, but into the chicane. Thankfully, it's the chicane track. Ooh, overcooked it there. All right, all right. I know we can fight for a podium. Not too bad. Let's get started. Running down the main straightaway, just starting out the second lap. We are hitting 184 miles an hour, 300 kilometers into turn one, running it a little bit on the inside there, hoping to maintain some power, maintaining second. There we go, uh, into turn two. They are going to get us on the braking and on the power, but we are up to a podium position. Come on, let's keep fighting. Lap and a half left or so. Eyes on the apex, overtake second, try to maintain some speed. Let's carry it around the outside on this corner, try to stay mid track. There we go. This isn't looking too bad. Looks bad for a second, but I know how it works on the other end. There we go, overtaking first, going into the chicane. Let's get on those brakes a little bit earlier, take the inside line. Oh, running him right through there. Ah, that did not work out at all, but there we go. Got a little bit of a snap from the Kawasaki. Into first we are. All right, are they gonna try to fight us in the last corner? Let's try to carry some speed up over the crest. That got us some distance. That's not too bad. All right. Oh God, I got to work on the suspension tuning of this bike. The brakes are not brilliant. That rear end comes up quite a bit, but here we go. The Canadian's fighting back. Let's block him off just a little bit. I'm relatively maintaining my line. Oh, this is going to be photo finish. Holy crap. It says we literally tied and it gave me second place.
I'm gonna have to restart. Round number two on Road Atlanta. Let's just let's just send it. See what happens here. At least the leader this time is on another Kawasaki, so we know he doesn't have more power than us. God, that finish was just outrageous. All right, that's a little better, you guys. My gosh. We know it's one of my favorite tracks, and it is in the rain. Imola in the rain on my old Kawasaki. This is going to be interesting. Okay, a little bit of wheelie on the start, losing us in positions. That will be just fine. I love the chicanes. Let's go into turn one, break a little early, and use that curb. Whoa, we just slaughtered half the field. I mean, no, nobody went down, but wow, just in the side. No problem, straight up to fourth place. That is doing us pretty well. Into the second chicane. This one lay out, laid out a little bit different. Whoa, we really did take him out. Okay, now after restarting, got through nice and clean up to third position onto the podium. We are making easy work of Imola in the rain. Hang on a second, guys. Bear with me here for one second. You got to see this. I was on slicks going into this race, but this game went as far as to think that I need rain tires. That's actually pretty amazing. End of the first lap. Rain is uh, showing to be challenging, but the AI just don't have it down the straightaway. Into the first chicane, we fly past them and take the lead. Whoa, getting some big wiggles into the first chicane. Let's make it around. Come on, use the curb on the inside to kind of pop us up there. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's maintain this position. Drift machine over here. Oh my gosh. Okay, now was turning tra traction control off in the rain the most brilliant thing I've ever done? Probably not, but we are going to take that victory on the Kawasaki at Imola. My gosh. For our next race, we are at the Nürburgring GP, and as well as taking our traction control off, the AI are now up to the 90% difficulty range. We want to race against some slightly faster, slightly more challenging racers in this series. Into the first corner, it's a very sharp hairpin. I'm sure a lot of us know the Nürburgring GP from the likes of Forza Motorsport, Gran Turismo, uh, Assetto Corsa, whatever, what, whatever you, might, uh, you might be playing. But on bikes, it's a completely different experience, I must say. Nürburgring GP in cars, for me, flows relatively well. Not the most flowy track, but definitely much more uh, piece by piece track that I can get fairly right. I'm not necessarily the best at it, that's for sure. But on bikes, it's a completely different animal. For example, in a car, this corner requires you to use the curb on entry to get maximum speed. It's a really tricky corner, if I'm completely honest, but on bikes, oh. You just have to take that corner for what it is. Now the AI difficulty being at 80% was definitely too low. 90% is feeling better, though we are still getting straight up to the front. That was beautifully done in the first lap. That's That was a really impressive move. I'm really proud of that one. Uh, but we might even have to bring that AI difficulty up a little further. Doing so would bring us some more, uh, some more credits in this uh, game and get us onto some further better bikes. Now, something interesting I'd like to point out is the lack of traction control. It feels way better, honestly, than it did with traction control. I'm really shocked. As long as you don't get on the power too soon or you don't do anything ridiculous like full throttle when you're knee down, it works out just fine. It gives you a little bit more power, a little bit less wheelie somehow. Uh, overall, it really works out that tra no traction control is the way to race in Ride 3. That was easy. Now on to Cadwell Park on the first lap on the start. They are running away. The harder challengers are definitely going to be much faster, but into turn two, we have the inside line. Let's see if we can make that work for us. Still down in 10th, making it up to ninth, taking this late apex. There we go, up to sixth place. That was no problem at all. The bike is handling beautifully. Let's see what we can do. Now for what is more in, arguably, a more exciting piece of Cadwell Park. We have a jump. Come on, send it. There we go. Whoa, getting a massive wheelie. Okay, up to fifth place. That's not too bad. Let's see if we can go further. Up to third, jump part two, electric boogaloo. Whoa, that's always thrilling. There we go, nipping at the tail of the Canadian in first place. Not gonna get him down here. 
but we will still make that wiggle work. We're doing just fine under breaking. Going on to the jump section. This is going to be a tight battle, I believe, for that first place position. Oh, less, less tight than I thought. Over the jump we go. Holding him off as much as we can. Down the main straightaway. It looks like we are going to grab that victory against the very difficult setting on the AI. That's not too bad. For the final race, we are at Daytona International Speedway on the MotoGP circuit for a one lap shootout. Everybody uh, that plays Forza or really anything like that that knows this track will know this track layout because Forza and other games do include it. But what they might not know is that it is the MotoGP layout. It has that long left-hander up here instead of going into the hairpin. Into this long left-hander, it's what makes the MotoGP layout unique. We can gain a lot of time on the AI right here. Now we are going to do our absolute best to catch up to these leaders. Again, it is only a one lap shootout. I have tuned the gears, extended them to 200 miles an hour. I don't know if this bike can honestly hit that even with the power upgrades, but we will have that bus stop chicane up ahead to try to make up some ground. Let's see what we could do down this straightaway. 175, 180, come on. Let's get a Kawasaki, send it straight in. There we go, just like the pros, nailing that curb. Oh, overrunning it on the, on the exit there, but that, you know, I'm gonna take it because I need to get this win. We need to win this race to finish out the championship. And while the Kawasaki's not quite going to have enough, I hope you guys enjoyed this tier, this series within the tier. This is a lesson, a very exciting race. Thank you guys for joining me again as we count down to Ride 4. We are playing through the Ride 3 Career Series. I want to know what bikes you guys want to see me race as well as tune in to the rest of this playlist. Click right here to do that and we will see you there.